this is this is Calcat the Calcatster, and welcome to our special edition of Talking Pointless. Uh, this is a bumper for beginning and the end of this. Um, yeah, uh, obviously we cannot do a movie review uh, because they're official lockdown thing, a social distancing thing uh, with the COVID nineteen coronavirus. So we're in the studio where we usually are in the studio anyway. So. Um, uh, Mark's cards is in his own place doing something else. I don't know what. And yeah, uh, there were uh, all kinds of projects that are uh, that involving volunteering at the church and several things, the kids club and and uh, uh, ushering and and uh, ESL and uh, kids blast, other other group uh, associations, uh, jobs, whatnot. All of that ended as of the the virus thing lockdown. Um, so, uh, yeah, they're, they're, they're sending rare stuff for the prayer chain of the group, but, uh, yeah, we don't film any of those anyway, so, um, yeah, so, I wonder what Stone Gremlins is gonna do, they can't go to the movie theater anymore, <laughs> they'll just have to watch all their videos, I guess, uh, so I don't know if we'll do that this week, or not, or not, um, I'll probably review something in my library here, I have lots of movies that I've not reviewed, um, <laughs> Uh, but yes, um, or watch a Netflix or something. We'll see. Uh, but for now, this is the, the virus thing. Um, I've started recording technically on day two, saying it was day one. So that's kind of confusing on there. Um, uh, but uh, but uh, yeah, so it's moved over two days. This is Saturday, so this will technically be uh, day seven, uh, even though it says five on there. Um, that, but. Uh, yeah, so that's the bumper on, on this video that I have. It's a video footage I'm going to show of the uh, of me briefly going out to uh, go to uh, some to Lucky, basically. And then today went to Target. At one point, he went to Walmart. I'm not going back to Walmart. It was crazy. Uh, there's, there's, uh, until that's done, unless they have the water. Um, they, uh, the, uh, well, maybe not. Um, try not to. Uh, they don't seem to have any toilet paper or paper towels anywhere. Fortunately, we stocked up before it began. Uh, well, but not before it began, but as it began, we went over there. Yeah. Um, but uh, uh, it's kind of nuts. The other, uh, what's also bizarre is we have all these talk show hosts and news people and stuff on the web that are now doing live blogging like we've been doing for 11 years on the Calcat Show. And it's weird. Uh, and there's other live bloggers too, but it's, it's uh, you know, it's, uh, Channel Awesome, Stone Gremlins, uh, PewDiePie, a uh, number of others. Oh, uh, let's see who else. Uh, LA Beast, uh, all these other guys, uh, 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 Matt Stoney, Furious Pete, uh, Reckless Eating, all those guys, are, they're all in a, in a place somewhere where they can, they can just keep going if they want to. And yeah, um, I'm not sure about Reckless Eating though, because there's a whole bunch of them. <laughs> or, or, uh, and I haven't heard from uh, Devonshire idiots in years, uh, but, but, uh, they, they were the, uh, the Barfy blog thing. Um, but, uh, but the, uh, the, uh, uh cover virus, uh, yeah, um, right away the stock market fluctuated ridiculously, I think it's mentioned here. Right away it appeared that, like, like, uh, it appeared that it was crashing, but that's because a bunch of people, including four Republican senators and a Democrat, were among those that went and did massive day trading. They weren't supposed to do that. Senators are not supposed to play the stock market because they're actually in the executive branch. They're not supposed to go into the financial district and do that. That's illegal. Uh, yeah. So they agreed on, on doing something illegal. Um, also, uh, also, yeah, that's weird. Also, they were claiming several times over that they had made cures, including Trump, who was going on about cures. Uh, they didn't have anything. It literally was like 12 hours later. They didn't, if they come up with something in 12 hours, they already knew what it was and how to stop it. And I, uh, that's not a conspiracy. That just sounds dumb. There's no way. It just is not possible. Um, <laughs> it's just like, if you eliminate the impossible, the improbable must therefore be the truth. They were lying. Yes. 
Um, and then somebody, and then Trump mentioned something about a, a mis uh, malaria drug, but okay, well, no, no. And the CDC guy is like, uh, um, uh, backup, oh uh, yeah, we didn't actually, he did that, uh, uh, yeah, essentially he doesn't know what he's talking about. We're trying to develop vaccines for the thing, whatever. Okay, what, what, okay, might, it might help to know what exactly they're dealing with. Uh, they're dealing with a version of the SARS virus. It's a SARS-2 COVID virus, uh, coronavirus. Uh, it's, it's SARS. It's like SARS. It's a little bit nastier than the flu. Uh, it's, uh, it's a respiratory ailment uh, affecting mainly children and young children and very, very old people. So, yeah, Trump doesn't care about Apparently, they don't care about the very, very old people, even though they vote for them. So they, they vote, so. Anyway, um, uh, yeah, so, and, and, yeah, the, the, if any of that makes any sense, they would use a SARS-like cultured dead virus to create a vaccine from the SARS version. They wouldn't mention malaria, that doesn't make any sense, it's not malaria, it's not mosquitoes, it's not rats, it's not the plague, it's, it's a, it's a virus spread from people being too close to each other. Yeah, yeah, um, in the same, <laughs> uh, yeah, and then they touch their face, and then they get something, or they touch their hands, and they get something. Uh, yeah, so, so it's fairly obvious what it is. However, the government doesn't doesn't uh, seem to get that, and that's mentioned here kind of offhandedly in the in the reviews. They can watch the video now. I'll watch the uh, watch the whole thing. There's about 11 minutes, and then uh, I will come back. <laughs> so I'll just do this. Okay, now. <laughs> yes. Um. The only reason the character seemed giddy in that is, is like nervous giddiness. He wasn't excited that there was a lockdown. He was excited that no one else was out there and he's doing something bad. He shouldn't be doing it. He's like wandering, walking around out there. Um, so yeah, I mean, he wasn't, uh, yeah. <laughs> and, he's, and, he's, uh, and other people were out there. It's not like there wasn't anybody. Like they, were, they were all doing something rebellious. Uh, there were people playing tennis. There were people shopping. There were people going to work. There were People completely ignoring the whole thing. Uh, there were driver idiots on the road to Walmart. They were, one of them tried to, uh, to try to play chicken. Apparently, you know, uh, um, it was bizarre. Um, but uh, he thought it was a zombie. But maybe he thought he was in the Road Warrior. I don't know. Um, but but yeah, the uh, the uh, yeah. Uh, Every, a lot of people are put on masks, and the masks are are like the hand sanitizer. They keep, they they run out of that. Uh, they have reintroduced baby wipes. Apparently, you can get those. Um, but uh, they've only run out of it because everybody's hoarding it. So stop that. Um, <laughs> too bad. Also, celebrities have been airlifted from various places to 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 treatment because they have more money and can afford the health care. Uh, uh, also, they could lift up the economy thing by just uh, just uh, going to the healthcare insurance companies right now and actually regulating them more. They won't, but they can go to them and say, "Okay, all these other pre-existing debts they have for this, let's just take those away," because yeah, uh, it's a virus and everybody's going to be swamped when they finally figure it out. Um, but they won't do that. They, that that's that makes too much sense to uh, stop the uh, <laughs> stop all the overspending on the drugs. I'm sure they will charge thousands of dollars for whatever whatever early version of the cure they make, and then that early version will probably be bad and will probably kill them because it isn't tested correctly because they lifted the restrictions. So yeah. Uh, tch. Hmm. So they say it is survival of the fittest. Survival of the fittest does not mean survival of the strongest. It means survival of the strongest. Uh, it, yeah, it means survival of the fittest. It does not mean survival of the mightiest or the one with the most money. It means of the fittest. Can a, can a creature reproduce 
and pass on its offspring. Yeah, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> so, anyway, ah, uh, yeah. So, yes, evil villain from Bot James Bond. Oh, uh, no. Uh, anyway. <laughs> it was the SciShow people that talked about survival of the fittest years ago. And they said, uh, yeah, it's not the fittest. It doesn't mean the strongest. It can be the nerdy guy. The nerdy scientist guy, if he can reproduce, he's the fittest. So, ha. Uh, yes, um, or, or the nerdy guy. Or, yeah, or, or <laughs> if, yeah, yeah, it isn't just the jock that, that gets the girl. It sometimes isn't the jock. Sometimes the jock is so annoying and egotistical it doesn't get any. That has nothing to do with the virus, but it does in the sense that the people that are in charge are rushing in to do stuff without actually regulating. That's not a good idea. So that's essentially the gist of the whole thing. And the people that are running around out there probably spreading it. Um, also, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, I noticed that in the whole video I was quite a distance from the other people. Uh, yeah, so, I was far enough away, they, they, in order for them to come up, they would have to, like, yeah, get, <laughs> they'd have to be right there. Uh, also, the five feet apart thing is from that movie, Five Feet Apart, it's not even a thing. Uh, yeah, if they if their cloud of their virus was in front of you and you, and you were behind that and you walked into it, well, they're gonna get it. Um, uh, yeah, so. But it's, yeah, it's the super rich don't want to give up their shit to help the super middle class and poor in a virus situation thing. Yeah, that's what Bernie Sanders was complaining. I'm not really a Bernie, I'm not a Bernie or, or, or Biden or whatever, but Bernie was right in cussing at the, the senator guy because that was, yeah, he was being a douche. <laughs> so, anyway, Biden would have done the same thing. And Trump would have cussed for the wrong reasons. So, uh, hmm. There, that's your talking pointless. Um, um, they, uh, week one of the, the corona. Yeah, and halfway through I didn't have a beard anymore. But that explained that that was a, yeah, probably don't want a lot of extra hair on you. All around, you'll stop getting me. Yeah, even though I got a hair up here that's going everywhere because no barber. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, uh, psst. Um, yeah, which is a bizarre. Um, yeah. I'm gonna go in the car because it's raining. Yeah, so I am in the car. And uh, yeah, so that closes out that. I wonder if the uh, the two uh, weeks here have been. Um, I wonder if the greenhouse gas emissions have gone down in the country. Uh, but the, uh, the, the people with the virus continues to rise. And Trump continues to selfishly think that uh, he's going to lose the election and it's all the liberals' fault that there was a, a virus. That's what he said. So we'll go by what he said. So, yeah, that doesn't make any sense. But uh, if anything, the uh, Republicans are basically kind of at fault because they didn't do anything about it in January. So, yeah, it's not, it's not the liberals. It's... It's not technically the conservatives either, all oh, kinda. They did, uh, they did uh, strip the CDC of its funding before. Uh, uh, you would think it's a conspiracy of them, not the other guys. But yeah. So yeah, the um, <laughs> you see, yeah, you'd think like they're saying the liberals did it somehow with their magic evil powers that they couldn't have done somehow, and then there's a stimulus package. But it doesn't actually give money to the poor and the uh, lower income. And they were complaining, there were four Republicans complaining that the uh, stimulus uh, would encourage unemployment and people to, that, like, something about $24 an hour, uh, health workers will stop working for, like, a paycheck. That doesn't make any sense. That economically makes no sense um, at all. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, you know, if, if this, I would never be in politics. But if I was, I would raise the minimum wage, raise the minimum wage to fifteen dollars an hour, and uh, temporarily, and even twenty in some places, uh, depending on the city. But they're not going to do that. And I would say, like, well, it's twenty dollars. It should be twenty dollars an hour around here, or in New York, or in Los Angeles, because of the high standard of living. You can't get an apartment on minimum wage around here at all. It's not possible. 
uh, or in New York or in places like that, L.A., Houston, Dallas, places like that. Uh, Washington, D.C., either. You'd end up in a skanky apartment on the border. So, yeah, and New York has the epicenter of the virus currently, or the highest epicenter of the virus. Epicenter means the center of. It's a little misleading. It's the highest highest number of the virus. Uh, the the uh, it's, uh, San Francisco is not... Uh, uh, doesn't have it as much because we were smart and we stayed indoors. Um, um yeah, because Sanctuary City. Uh, yeah, uh, in 2020, in November, don't vote for Trump. Vote for anyone other than Trump if you can. Yeah, because he's made a mess of everything. Yes, that that's that. Or you can do whatever you want, but don't vote for Trump. <laughs> I was watching up on them trying to do that bill in, in the in the Senate. Apparently, the provision is to give the senators a bunch of money and not give the poor anything because the whole they'll just they'll just keep it and not work. Their mo their motivation is weird. In that, like, like, well, they're they're rich, super rich, and they want to keep the money. Yeah, that that makes sense. But uh, for them, but but they're they're Scrooges. They're greedy Scrooges, and they're. And they're like, like, if people don't want to work and they want to be on unemployment, it's capitalism. So let it happen. Yeah, it's like, why would that do anything to the economy? That those, those the alleged few people that are on unemployment, well, that they can they can still be on unemployment. What's wrong with that? Nothing wrong with that. But they turn like, oh my gosh, no, they have to be. No, they all have to be employed in the super uber workforce. To the master and and, and and give and and spend all their money on on and barely get get by because yes, uh, so we can get our our mansions and yachts and things that they're never gonna see. But yeah, so that's, that's their that's their motivation. They just want to, they have to take more money instead of giving it away. You would think that somebody like that one of them is Lindsey Graham. You would think that some of these hyper-evangelicals would be like, Oh, give to the poor? Gee, isn't that what Christ would do? Yes. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> give the poor what they need to have to survive. There's an idea. There's a concept. Yes. Uh, but no, 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 no. They're just going to be slackers. Those, those uppity slackers. They're going to be slackers. Like, come on, guys, really? <laughs> yeah, I know there isn't much video on... There isn't any video from Wednesday or Thursday. So, note that there's no video from Wednesday or Thursday. Wednesday night, I found out that friend Tim Cantrell apparently was in the hospital after getting his part of his foot amputated because he has diabetes and he got infected. And, uh, yeah, and so and we couldn't go and see him or anything because... Yeah, the coronavirus is everywhere. But uh, as for the, uh, well, when it's over. Um, but yeah, uh, and uh, yesterday it was a trans, uh, Transformers filming. There wasn't much going on. Um, so yeah, uh, mainly going to banks and putting out, putting, putting money in mom's account from her other account. It's mainly all that was yesterday, so it's not very exciting. And today too. And uh, also canceled the credit card that was... Uh, a, de a debit card today. <clears throat> Nothing going on today. Today's Friday. Um, so yeah, that's kind of it. There's really nothing. And yeah, there's no written version of this blog. Although the Cillian story is apparently going to do a parody of the whole thing. <laughs> Just to be offensive. Anyway, <laughs> well, not offensive. Not really funny. Anyway, so, Bob, uh, yeah. On the, uh, on, yeah, um, the, the, uh, this week's uh, locked in indoors uh, lockdown thingy. Uh, this is meant as a bumper, I guess you can stick it on the end, really, because it's kind of on the end. Uh, yeah, apparently the uh, yeah somebody broke into the Dollar Tree last night, <laughs> and and but and it looks like they busted the window with intent to the dollar store. That's pretty skanky. With intent to steal something. I don't know if they actually did. It didn't look like they thrashed anything in the store. Um, I think it was probably disgruntled employees that were crackheads because there were people screaming and yelling at each other yesterday. 
out in front of that store. That's probably what happened. Just and there were crackheads, or at least disgruntled crackheads were out there. Like ah, oh, they didn't want to steal stuff. Anyways, so that's what that was at the end. Uh, the, uh, the Tim thing is mentioned twice, so I don't need to go over that again. Um, the um, uh, relatives in Minnesota don't have it, uh, the virus. Uh, they're locked down as well. Apparently Duluth is locked down. Uh, Chicago, I guess, is too. Uh, so the other, uh, yeah, and then all of the uh, unrelated Channel Awesome people, they're they're locked down. Uh, and the uh, and the uh, spinoff ones, the uh, the ex the Xers of that are, are doing their own thing, locked down. Uh, Lindsay Ellis has a, uh, a blog on cats. If you want to watch that, it's fascinating. Yeah, the history of cats. Uh, uh, yeah, well, what what is cats? Uh, <laughs> what are cats? Should be what is what is cat? So watch that. Um, uh, on, on YouTube. Um, that that's the play with the train wreck movie that came out six months ago. Uh, also, uh, yeah, Unbox Reviewed and Viewed and Reviewed. Uh, it's another website that does reviews of, of sick and twisted uh, John Waters type grody, gross movies. Uh, reviewed some messed up things. Uh, 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 something about a, a, like a uh, evil spy limo association with the limos uh, taking these different like like devil dudes out to like do bad things and in disguise and then come back and then the limos came to life. It's like somebody somebody was seriously on something when they wrote that. Um, yeah, so <laughs> they didn't show any clips from it because like a, a similar to a lot of these blogs out here, they can't. Um, so they didn't show any clips from it. Uh, yeah, they, they said, well, they probably get flagged. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but these, uh, yeah, devil dudes in disguise and their cars come to life at the end and apparently they talk through their headlights. And somebody was on some serious drugs. <laughs> they wrote that. Um, yeah, so... <coughs> um, yeah, so this is just on the post-mortem of the story. <coughs> I don't have the virus or nothing. Just to see a lot of pollen out there. Yeah. It's, it's, it's pollen everywhere. Yeah, it's, all, it's allergy season, so, yeah. Um, the virus. Ooh, I did go to the McDonald's. Uh, I got a McMuffin with egg. It was on there. Um, uh, yeah, it's not very good. Uh, yeah, they're, they're not good. Um, <laughs> got another one earlier in the week. And, uh, yeah, this was the McDonald's I used to work at 20-some years ago. 30 years ago, I should say. 30 years ago. 1990. Yeah. yeah, so. But that was only briefly. Like, so it was about a month. Yeah. They remodeled it and made it look. All the new McDonald's and Wendy's and Starbucks and all of them try to look like Starbucks. So. It's like the hip and modern coffee shop looking places. They've all been retrofitted. It's the same old slop. Same food. They just made everything. Like every, even the McDonald's in Salmon Creek, Oregon was done up to look like a, a coffee shop. It's clearly not, but done up to look like Very, very uh, back to the future look, look, kind of look, look to it. And, and we're living in the future of 2020. So. Yeah. yeah, the future of 2020. Tch, the way I envisioned it in when I was a teenager, when I was about 16, just met Tim and Jim, Tim Cantrell, Jim Buffkin, and John. Mark's heart, John Yeager. Uh and uh, in high school, and well, I had Tim in junior high, and John was in junior high due to him being due to it being a school with high school and junior high together on one side, and little kids on the other side. It was a small school; there were a hundred some students, uh, and then split down the middle, and there was a quad. And there's two sets of quads, and you know, and. Um, in Pine Hill School off Cambriana. It's now a daycare. Uh, it was next to Valley Christian, so they were the rival school. And it was on location, and it was a series. Uh, child stars, failed child stars. <laughs> and uh, that's what we called ourselves. Um, and yeah, so, uh, uh, yeah, that, that food is not sitting well. It's not a good thing. Um, but yeah, the, uh, 
So we did this show that was bizarre thing. Um, yeah. Um. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. It was. It was a journal, basically, a live, live journal of life kind of thing. If we had technology, if YouTube and the internet had existed. We all would have been on it. Instead, we did audio recordings of much of our stuff. So we had like audio tapes and things like Academia. We thought of that long before Hero Academia did. We thought of our version of Academia in 1984. That's how long ago that was. Our version recorded academics class. That's the kind of thing I would have done with audio tape. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, and we were acting insane. In the background, you can hear Angie Tyson and Michelle English arguing about some money she had to do her for, the, for cigarettes at the store. This is the kind of thing they would have talked about in the 80s. Because you could go to the... <laughs> you could go to the, um, the thing. The, the 7-Elevens and the gas station down the street. Brandon, Cambrian, Camden. Uh, and the one down the street was... Uh, yeah, they didn't care. And they just had cigarette machines just out there, and you could just get to, so mainly the girls, totally was the, mainly the girls, uh, would go there during break and get packs of cigarettes and smoke up like, <laughs> would come wafting out of the girls' bathroom, and next to the boys' bathroom. The boys didn't smoke as much, the girls did. I don't know why, I guess it was just gross, so we didn't, I, I didn't want to at all. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So there's a little on-location story. Um, uh, yeah, it was a self-class. It was called the Social-Emotional Learning Function class. Yeah, I, uh, John wasn't technically in that, Mark's cards. I wasn't technically in that. Uh, he was in Steve's class most of the time. Uh, so, yeah, so uh, that was a different class. We were in Rick and Joyce and Art's class. Uh, yeah, um, the names you wouldn't know. Um, <laughs> But, uh, yeah, so, yeah, it was on location. Yeah, I don't know, um, some of it was recorded, but most of it had music in the background, 80s hits and whatnot. As well as the audio had a lot of 80s hits and stuff. Also, it was kind of raunchy, so we can't release any of it on YouTube. It'll get flagged, even though it's, like, done on old audio tapes and it's old and recorded and stuff. We even put a lot of 80s hit songs in the background because it was the 80s. So it's all, this, it wouldn't make any sense. It would be like clip to the scene where I joke about balls or something. Ha ah, Okay, but no, no, we clip. And then we'll go to uh, John talking about falling on his knee. Then we clip to Jim Buffkin yelling at a teacher or something. Or, or somebody throwing a frisbee or something. And then, oh, oh we got to clip that out because there's a song in the background playing. And someone's boom box is going doo, 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 doo. You know, uh, we got to cut that out. Um, they're referencing Breakfast Club. Ah, oh, we're in trouble. Um, or Pink Floyd The Wall. Yes, uh, I Don't Need No Education was uh, Pink Floyd. was a common song there. Yeah, the, the New Mutants using that as their slogan. Uh, yeah, we thought of that in the 80s when that came out. It's like, yeah, yeah, you guys are not thinking the first people to think that. I wonder when that's coming out. A lot of movies are not coming out on Saturday. A lot of movies are not coming out because of, uh, yeah, the, the nobody can go to the theater. Uh, I understand that Kevin Smith, the DC fanatic, more so than Marvel. Uh, a little bit of Marvel, but more he's more DC. Finally has seen Birds of Prey, the fabulous emancipation of Harley Quinn, and he liked it. But he, I'm surprised he hadn't seen it like weeks ago when he was on the tour thing. They did come to Oakland, and uh, although we didn't go to Oakland, because why would we want to go to Oakland? It's kind of, kind of skanky there. Um, but I did see, you know, the um, Jane Silent Bob reboot when they came initially, when it came here and it was, uh, yeah, so I got the poster and all that stuff. <laughs> but yes, uh, it's gonna seem again. Um, but yeah, uh, <laughs> but uh, so yeah, he finally watched it. I think he might mention it on his blog, I don't know, but I don't know him, but so but go watch it. No, <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, they're making another clerk's, I guess they're making a they were going to make a Mallrats movie again, I guess, or something. But it morphed into something else. 
It's morphed into part of this movie because there's a mall scene. That's all it really needs to be seen. That's all the Clarks needs to be is a scene. Uh, yeah, when I do something different in the original, I, 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 yeah. anyway. So now the now the thing kicked out. Uh, yeah. But it doesn't matter that that was noisy. So that's pretty much it. Uh, yeah, that's all I really need to say. Uh, the yeah, Kevin Smith. Uh, yeah, stuff in the early the nineties stuff, stuff was later. Around the same time, the uh, round robin back to McDonald's. That was the same era as McDonald's. <laughs> Ninety, the nineties, early nineties. Um, that was after high school. Eighty, eighty nine was his senior year. Tim and I senior year. He was also a senior. Uh, yeah, so uh, uh, John was a freshman. He went on to Silver Creek. From there. Jim Buffkin had graduated the year before, so, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, so, yeah. Uh, so, that's pretty much it um, for Saturday. That's week three. Uh, I mentioned some political stuff. There's a lot of people uh, making a profit, apparently, still on the coronavirus. They knew about it in January, and it was an outbreak in China in January. There was going to be a fake one, and they didn't end up doing that because that was stupid. I told them not to do a fake one. And then the real one started, and it confused all the fake GOP ones and wanted to have a fake one. A uh, fake virus, yeah. Because they'd seen a movie with the name coronavirus in it. Yeah, it's a zombie movie. Yeah. Um, that's not what this is. It's not a zombie movie. Um, and then some, about a third of the country doesn't want to lock down. They just refuse to. So they're going to contaminate the rest of the country with the uh, coronavirus. Meanwhile, the meanwhile, some of the Fox pundits claim that they are on the front lines. Uh, no, they're not. Uh, the only time a reporter went on the front lines that actually is something in a war, war zone was some of the people from Fox and some of the people from CNN and NBC. Back in the Al Jazeera days of the Iraq war, some of them actually did go to Iraq. In this case, they're not doing that. They're claiming they are while they're in a closet. They're like, look, like I'm totally over here in the, in the zone of the virus. I'm standing over here. And, the, and I have, that isn't a green screen behind me at all. No, no, no. This isn't, no, no. But the guy in the story, Hannity, uh, Sean Hannity's nowhere near that stuff. Come on. Now, Geraldo, for all of his weirdness, totally went to Iraq and totally got in trouble because he was, like, giving positions away. The sand. So he totally was there. And he's like, oh. And then there was the other the other reporter on that other station, I think it was CNN, claiming he was in the um, Katrina uh, uh, hurricane, and he wasn't because they panned around and he was standing in the thing and there was like a, a wind blower in the background. Wow, they had to stage that whole thing. Why couldn't they just go where it was windy? Anyway, but uh, yeah, so there there are people. Uh, and Hillary claimed I, mean, I probably mentioned that yes, Hillary claimed that she was in chopper fire over Iraq, but she wasn't. So, yeah, it's happened before that they've made up stuff. Uh, O'Reilly claimed he was in the Argentine riots when he wasn't. He tried to start one when he went outside and got a little drunk. But uh, but he was a thousand miles from the, the riots of that of the Falcons. A thousand miles. That's from here to... That's from... No, that's from Los Angeles to Oregon. That's an entire state away. That's how far away he was. A thousand miles. That's a, it's about 500 to... Uh, L.A. from here, 500, 600, and it's about another three or 400 up to Oregon, the other way. So he was literally in another part of the state. Like, I was totally there, I was. It's like, no, you weren't. You weren't anywhere near there. Cameron was trying to tell you that. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, they, they, they'll, they'll try to grandstand it. Anyway, so the other thing was the spring breakers that are going to get, some of them came down with it. Um, yeah. Oh, yes, and there was everyone's favorite fake judge, and it's not, um, not, um, <laughs> not Judge Judy. I, think, I don't think she's around anymore. It's all reruns. It was Judge Jeanine Pirro who claims to be a judge. Like most television judges or doctors, like Dr. Oz or Dr. Phil, cannot actually practice medicine, right? So this lady cannot practice being a judge. She's just a TV personality. She can't do that. She's the worst judge I've ever encountered on the TV. She's, she's awful. 
like, I'm going to judge only you guys. How does that work? Uh, <laughs> just to be impartial. Anyway, so she, uh, she got blitzed. She was at home, locked down. She got, she got drunk on something. Probably the good vodka. Probably, probably the vodka de Rust. Russia, the people's vodka. It was probably the good stuff. And she got really, really fly. Really, she was fucked. She was hammered. She was done. She was like, ah, I don't want to do it. I'm journalism. Like, right. Oh, damn. It was the good stuff. Maybe she was drinking Corona. Well, I know she wasn't drinking Corona because that actually won't get you drunk. It's really weak stuff. <laughs> But, but yeah, um, she was, <coughs> but she denied it. She said, the liberals, oh, I was like, no, no, it, you, you posted your, you had a drunk rave blog and posted about it. <laughs> you were drunk. It's hilarious. <clears throat> Not that it hasn't happened on the, the Calcat show episode, that Calcat hasn't been a little schnookered, but yes, I'm not on the news, so it's not a news station. This is not anything. Years ago, there was a New Year's party where, where I had all the the, 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 the liqueur stuff. It was gross. Uh, also, there was a also there was one year where I opened a bunch of Transformers up while eating edibles and uh, pot tea. That was interesting. You can kind of tell because I didn't know what I was doing. I opened these toys. Oh, uh, I'm just gonna look at it for a minute. You open another one. Uh, <laughs> and another one. Uh, <laughs> Apparently, around April 1st, that was last week, uh, a bunch of news outlets started airing what amounts to a panic scare concerning everyone running out of everything and stricter guidelines. This April Fool's joke spread all over the place and was reported on regular news media stations. Somebody was pranking them, but apparently, because Kushner found out about it and of a number of other people, they put it on TV, like they like it was real. And now old people are panicking about, like they're running out of everything because they're gonna run out of everything because they say so. Oh. And it's like, it was a, some sick uh, April Fool's joke. The, the, of course there's still a virus, but apparently some sick April Fool's joke. Right, okay, so that's messed up. Yeah. Another reason not to like that holiday, that particular day. Um, th there you go. So, I'll go to the store and see whether there could be a stockpile to run. It's not gonna be. <laughs> they're not, they're not gonna, like, stop putting, like, fruit out and frozen stuff. It's ridiculous. <sighs> mm. Mm. Okay, I look more official with this here mask on. Yeah, like, like that's some kind of, cr like, crazy Dr. Giggles character. <laughs> but yes, um, uh, <laughs> I'm not a, I'm not a dog. I'm just wearing a mask. And apparently, neither is Trump. Um, yeah. So <laughs> the uh, this whole plugging this malaria drug to the hydroxy uh this the, they started doing that before the virus started. So they're plugging this weird like like stuff. It's like a cumin variety. It's like for uh, oh, now they're getting it. So it's, it's not made for viruses. It's not made to kill viruses, it's made to kill malaria, and it's made to kill lupus. It's not made for that. And uh, it's bad for, bad for old people and bad for children. So it's really bad. And it's bad for hearts and eyes and kidneys and all other things. But they're plugging it because they have stock in it. Kushner has stock in it. Dr. Oz has stock in it. They all have stock in it. Okay, Dr. Oz is not a real doctor, he's a TV doctor, he's a fake doctor. Go on television and you're a television personality, you're no longer that person. Judge Janine is no longer a judge. No longer a judge. So, um, so they're touting this thing because they like it, because they like the idea of having it, whereas, they're, whereas uh, uh, it doesn't do anything. It's not going to help anybody. It would only make older people die. Great. Um, um, what a good idea. Um, <laughs> instead of that, uh, don't, don't, the hydrochlorofluorofin, it's not going to do anything. Just because it's called Plagarin, the, the name, uh, the generic name over the counter is Plagarin. Uh, it's like a, it's like an anti-immune uh, suppressant. 
It's an immune suppressant, which means it destroys the immune system's ability to fight certain infections. Immune suppressant. Um, and also, uh, it's bad for you. It's got all kinds of side effects. So, uh, it's not going to help with the virus. No, the trick to, to, trick to the virus is because it's a coronavirus, right? So, so it's like SARS, but but more intense. It's like uh, N1H1, but more intense. It's like bird flu, and cow flu. It's similar in the same family. So to go out after a drug that isn't is equivalent to giving Coumadin to somebody who's not a cancer patient. You don't do that. <laughs> you know, we'll just give them, give them like euthanasia. It's not going to work. What you do is you give them something that will fight SARS, which makes sense. Yeah. So make some stuff that fights SARS. Then there's no more COVID-19. Goes by way of COVID-3. Yeah. Or something like that. Yeah, or COVID-12. COVID-13. Uh, at least you can read that up on the internet. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a doctor, so just know that. <laughs> but that other thing is bad. Yeah, don't do that. Uh, there's nothing other other wordly in the news about the, other than oh yeah, they're they're claiming another thing. Oh, Fox is so full of shit. Fox News is claiming it's stabilizing. It's the word they keep using over and over again. And and CNN called them on some of their bullshit. And now they're claiming that they, that CNN kicked them out somehow, so CNN couldn't report. That's exactly the opposite of what happened. Some of the CNN reporters were going to the meetings, and they kept saying, "Quit saying bullshit," and then like like going on about other stuff afterward. And they kicked CNN out of the press meeting. It wasn't the other way around. They kicked CNN out. They said, "You can't come into our press meetings anymore." They'll probably say that about NBC and CBS and all those others as well, and Comcast and everyone else. And so, so the Trump administration kicked CNN out. A number of anybody that doesn't agree with Trump kicked out of the meeting. Uh, then you just have your propaganda station. It's not good because Trump even said in one of those meetings early on, "I listen to only Fox News. It's a great station, Fox News." It's like, really? Okay, you get all your medical information from Fox pundits of your own propaganda station. How does that work? You get your news from your propaganda station that you put out. Hmm, that your friends put out, I should say. The Murdochs are, yeah, they're related to the Bushes. They're, they're not your friends, but uh, <laughs> they'll put out what they like. But uh, <laughs> that's just weird. It's the friend of the friend is, that's kind of the enemy, the friend of your enemy is your friend. Because it's kind of it's kind of Muslim. I'm just saying. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, radical, kind of weird sounded. Uh, but yeah. Um, so, so he likes the propaganda station because they'll tout his pharmaceutical stuff on the internet that doesn't work. And and no, the anti-vaxxer thing is stupid too. It's just that like like yeah, that's dumb too. You should not do that. Saying that that if the vaccine doesn't work. Unlike Trump going, oh, just take it, just take this thing uh, that I thought up out of the blue that has no scientific basis and we've done no testing at all on. Take that, because I said so. No, fuck you, dude. I ain't taking that shit. <laughs> also, because heart and eye stuff. Couldn't anyway. So, there you go. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I can't take it. So, there you go. <laughs> um, so, you better give me something else, then. Uh, yeah, I can't afford to lose any eyesight. Yeah, can't afford to lose another stuff either. Got that heart thing. There you go, can't, can't do that stuff. Yup, uh, that would actually be bad. It's just, apparently, also diabetics can't take it, but I'm not that. So, uh, so it's just bad, a bad drug. It should be taken off the market. I don't care if it's been around since the 50s. Oxychloroquine should be taken off and just find something else to cure malaria with. But yeah, it's not malaria, it's not bugs, it's not mosquitoes. It was, it was a, a viral born pathogen passed by eating bad pig meat in China. So bat, that the bats had bitten. The bats bit the pigs, the pigs had the bad pig. So it's kind of like the swine flu, it's kind of like SARS. So if anything, hopefully the CDC is looking into 
a SARS type version of the vaccine because it is a SARS coronavirus. It literally is what it is. It's just not SARS 03, it's SARS 19. COVID 19, coronavirus 19. Like, hey, guys could look that up. It's not that hard. <laughs> I'm not even a millennial. I bet they know more than I do. About it. So even if even if we did, and it's funny because like Mark's cars mind the idea of the two of us not stopping the orange man. So they got referenced in the Transformers the Trans movie thing. Actually, it was a, a neat reference because like they go to Cybertron in the Transformers thing. It's near Earth, and there aren't any humans in the script. So it's literally 2020. It's April 2020 in the stories. So they're like, they're like, oh yes, the humans were all sheltered indoors because of a plague exacerbated by an orange menace. <laughs> it's just messed up, okay? And then they're Autobot as well. How topical. They just don't say anything about it after that. So there aren't any humans in the story. <laughs> The latest news on Fox to keep everyone like pissed off. That's a uh, that's an uber Catholic. Apparently, is a lie story printed by an uber right wing website on Facebook about Nancy Pelosi and Biden, saying they put in the coronavirus bill abortions for late abortions. It's completely bullshit. It obviously would be bullshit, but the buzzword there is abortion. It, they completely made that shit up. And they just ran with it because Fox loves talking about other things to distract people, including that. They love that abortion. Oh. Okay, yeah. first of all, late term, that's illegal. It's already illegal. They're not going to put that in a random bill for, for, for relief of, like, medical relief. Why would they, why would they put that in there? So they didn't, they didn't do that. They're lying. Um, <laughs> uh, and I would actually know because I looked it up. Uh, anyway, yeah, yeah, fact checked and everything from three different sites that were actually legitimate. But yeah, it's like, it's like, come on, guys, are we gonna go on about that shit again? Like the last election where they kept bringing up like, like that fake disease uh, center for progress, center for medical progress, which which like claimed they were like selling baby parts, and then it turns out they were actually arrested for fraud and for trying to solicit baby parts. Kind of ironic down in Texas and California. So if it was those guys, and it probably was, they've been to jail for fraud and lying. I think they probably are lying again. But Fox loves that kind of stuff, and they're like, oh no, it's totally true. Pelosi's evil, and she's got a pitchfork, and she's like scooping out things out of a bucket uh, to eat them. Um, um. Oh my God, it's horrible. She's a cannibal, or whatever. They'll just make up random shit, because sure, why not? Just piss off their base. Well, it doesn't work, because it's stupid. In fact, back in the day, four years ago, the Midwestern Duluth chapter of the Anti-Abortion League, the Anti-Abortion League, told those people to dial it back. On their website, they said, okay, those people from Medical Progress, quit contacting us. We won't have anything to do with you, and we're Catholic. That's what they said. It's like, you, you need to dial it back because you're, you're crazy. Like, there's nobody selling parts. And there's nobody doing that now. So, and that's actually my late Aunt Roseanne's former, like, protest site was the MCCL. It's still there. Um, <laughs> yeah, she was, she was a uber Catholic right wing back then. And she did not like abortions. So. That, that site would know whether that was true or not true. They would have checked immediately. Um, <laughs> you would think. Uh, but there's other ones that, that, yeah, the progress is bullshit. So that's the latest thing. They're trying to make up stuff about alleged baby killer abortions. No! Oh, it's like they're not doing that. If you eliminate the impossible, the improbable must therefore be the truth. Or even in this case, confirmation bias. It's a basic love journalism. You don't like, like, it's a round robin thing. You don't like, it's like Trump saying Fox News is, is his source of news. But he's the propaganda engine that puts the news there. That's a round robin. You can't have 
a story exacerbating a story that's about a story. It doesn't work that way. That's, that's not a source. If, if you have a commentator on Fox, mainly Fox or CNN, go on and say, NBC, go on and say, okay, this happens because my sources say so, and your sources are your own people, that is also confirmation bias. So in an example, you can't have, you can't have Geraldo, Judge Janine, and let's see, uh, Hannity and Tucker all agree that they are sources in the story because they all work for the network that puts out the story. No, no, the source for a story has to be from elsewhere other than within your own echelon, or it's stupid. That's a classic, get, get it right thing. Uh, yeah. A Dwight Bentel, who would live to be 104. Dwight Bentel said, just get it right. On the journalism paper, on Santa Spartan Daily. He lived to be 104. Um, <laughs> pretty remarkable. And then they immediately moved the department when he died. Um, uh, uh, so, uh, yeah. Um, but, but yeah, the, the, the Spartan Daily, San Jose State. And it's like, it's like the, uh, get it right. You, know, you can't use the Spartan Daily staff for your news story unless it's an editorial on what you did at a news story. Then it's not news, it's editorial, it's opinion. If a bunch of you go to a concert and record a concert, it's an editorial. It's, yeah, it's, it's, your, it's not news, it's opinion. And, and they're marketing these, these opinions as news. It's, an opinion is, uh, a fact can be an established opinion in these guys' minds, whereas an actual fact, you know, it has to be a testable hypothesis that has, that has at least two witnesses that aren't related to you in any way, like don't work for you, aren't related to you in any way. So it'd be like if you wanted to find out about, like, like a news report, you would have to actually physically go out and interview people that are in the actual thing. Otherwise, yeah, you've, it doesn't work. So yeah, you have to you have to go out, find people on people on the street, interview them about the said story, whether they know it or not. That's how that silly uh, what's that show? Uh, that ridiculous. Uh, uh, Jesse Waters show, he goes and interviews people that don't know what they're talking about because he doesn't know what he's talking about. Uh, he hasn't interviewed me. Uh, that would be, he would probably cut my footage because I know what I'm talking about. Uh, he'd be like, no, I don't want to listen to that guy. Arrgh, I'll just cut it out so make it sound, make him sound dumb. Uh. Yeah, I've never seen that guy go to the poli sci department of a college and talk to him. Never seen that happen. Because he's not going to do that. Because he's going to, like, smart people are going to talk back. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, that's how confirmation bias works. Just thought I'd tell you. Oh, yeah. In order, in order to get two sources or more, you don't use your own pundits. That's not how to do that. They should know that. Um, then, see, you know what's funny is the, the comedy shows, they apparently go out and actually get sources like like J John Stewart show would go out and find people that weren't John Stewart people would interview them on the street that's a, that's news <laughs> that works <laughs> I mean if he uses his own people it didn't that's news uh, other commentators that agree with you also isn't news because that's technically wrong too so if you had uh, Colbert and Stewart and and Trevor Noah all on a show being being sources that wouldn't work either because they all kind of know each other still confirmation bias so you can say that <laughs> the young turks commentators over on the progressive uh in internet uh, channel biggest one in the world uh they can say uh or they can um they can interview each other but it doesn't mean anything they have to actually go out and and uh, yeah they have to have ada roll and the other and uh Kasparian and Jank Unger have to go out and actually like ask other people and they do on occasion. But now they're sheltered indoors so they can't but they're currently, but yeah. Um <laughs> so occasionally they'll bring in some random other person that's from another progressive source. And that is actually journalism. I know they Fox people hate that, but that's actually journalism. Uh yeah, so you check your facts, you put things together. And they weren't on about this, but I'm sure they are now. Um, yeah, a stupid Facebook thing from a right winger is going on about, of course, making it sound as fantastical as possible. 
It's like, they, they, and, and they never learn. The Fox people never learn. They spread the story out to Cousin Judy. I had to, call, I had to in, text to Cousin Judy and say, like, no, nope, no, nope, that story is false. She just ran with it. They're not, you know. Um, uh, that's how that stuff spreads. It's like, no, they got to check. No, how could it be false? Oh, it must be the lamestream media. How can the regular media be lamestream media? That doesn't make any sense. The regular media is the regular media. It's not, how can it be lamestream? That's, that's childish and stupid of them. So there you go. There's my rant. Mm -hmm. Thursday. Ooh, I look like it. I still look like the evil dentist because I played the evil dentist in high school in Little Shop Horrors play. <laughs> and Tim Nielsen was the patient. Oh, uh, that was pretty funny. <laughs> But didn't his butt had never ever be any good. Who wants her teeth done by the Marquis de Sade? Hey, wait, I'm not numb. Open my eyes, because you're like, oh, da, 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 da. Because, yeah, if any one of those SNL comedians would have been similar to me, it would have been Steve Martin. Except for the hair. I, I, I. It never, it didn't turn gray until I was 40 or something. Steve Martin, his hair turned gray when he was like 20. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Anyway. Uh, yeah, the Fox people are claiming the stimulus package is going to the illegal immigrants, of course. Which is not, because that would be impossible. And also, <laughs> uh, the banks have figured out a way to uh, screw it, because the Treasury Secretary is a Goldman Sachs guy. So he's all like, he put a stipulation in the bill, the stimulus bill, that says uh, the banks get to uh, for, uh, mess with people's, lo people's loan from the government. So the banks get to take it if they want it for a credit debt and whatnot. It's messed up. Which is the real reason Pelosi didn't want to do it at first. She read that. She's all like, ah. But then they decided to make up this elaborate story about abortion. It's connected to that other story. It wasn't about abortion. It was about some bill, stimulus bill thing. With, like, it had nothing to do with that. But Fox, of course, went with the most extreme thing they could think of. And uh, Trump wants to reopen the economy. Although, strangely enough, the Fox watchers and the Trump supporters are still in the, under the bizarre delusion that January and February didn't exist and that Trump just didn't know, but he went around saying he did. Well, if he didn't know, it doesn't make any sense because he clearly knew. He just didn't care. He just wanted his uh, stuff to go on. Um, no, he knew. <laughs> like, don't go around saying you're going to reopen everything in April. Now, did that not happen at the beginning of this whole five-week thing? Did he not say that? He totally said that. Come on. You guys have no memory. Like, as, as the comedians are joking, what are, they, are, they, are they Dory the fish? What's going on? <laughs> anyway, so this is Thursday. I'm talking Dory the fish. Uh, also, also um, I just thought I would throw in the, the thing that scientists since uh, finding Dory have, have done a report to see whether goldfish and blue tangs actually have memory problems. They don't. It turns out they were just misreading their sort of skitter brain movements in the in the fish tanks. As though they didn't remember, but it was more like they were they were really motivated. They did remember. They were just like ADD or something. But it wasn't memory. It just, so anyway. So yeah. <laughs> Still Thursday. Yeah, that's kinda it. Just, just thought I would point out as, as to be bizarre is that in the <laughs> oh, yeah, and uh, and so uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, and there's some weird psychologist guy from Yale and Berkeley going on about how it's herd mentality or something, which, and then he put himself off as a medical doctor, but he's a psychologist. That's different, and he. Ironically, named himself Dr. Katz, with a K, like the Dr. Katz psychologist cartoon character from the 80s. Yeah, because the older folks aren't going to remember that, but my generation's totally going to remember that. They'd be like, wait a second, this guy's a, this guy's a parody. He's not a person. Well, he's a person, but he's playing a character. He's a hypocrite. Literally a hypocrite. Literally. The definition of a hypocrite is, is a, an actor person trying to pretend to be something else. Literally, what hypocrite means. Yeah, <laughs> so he's literally a hypocrite. So don't listen to Dr. Katz, 
That's ridiculous. Uh, although on location, cats is with a K. Is, yes. <laughs> but no, it was a different different show than, than his. Mine was first. Mine was first! Ah! KTS was radio in the 80s when I was a teenager. <laughs> but yeah, um, the fatal child star. But I am also an actor. Oh, no. <laughs> but yes, um, they don't have any affiliation though. Oh, yeah, uh, not really. They're gonna say I do. They're gonna be all like, no, he's a total liberal affiliation. Oh, and I'll be like, not really. Uh, <laughs> sensible, maybe. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, let's, uh, not, not just do that because the economy is that way. Not, not go back yet. Starve the virus out like they did SARS 2. In 02. No 03. Yeah, it's a, it's a SARS virus. Uh, that one of the other pundits was saying it was like the AIDS. How is it like AIDS? It's a retrovirus that destroys your immune system. It's not like AIDS. It's not even close. Not even the same animal. It would be like saying it was like the flu. It's slightly different. It's different than the flu. It's closer to the flu than it is to. It's even it like malaria. It's not malaria. It's not the same thing. You can't treat malaria. It would be like... It would, it would be like... To use an extreme, it would be like, like a guy, like that gag from, um, from the SNL sketch or something. I don't think it was SNL though. I think it was something else, where this guy comes into the the doctors, and he's got a knife stuck in his chest, and they're like they tried everything else but pulling the knife out of his chest. The joke was that, like, like they were they were so obsessed with what they were doing, that they didn't realize the very obvious thing right in front of them. There was a knife stuck in the guy's chest. Uh, and it was a Dr. House parody, actually. Um, <laughs> which is mostly what most of the Fox doctors are, television doctors. Just like most of the lawyers on Fox are television ones and can't teach law. Just like Dr. Phil is not able to practice psychology in the state of California, but can go on a TV show and say that he's Dr. Phil. So among those other things. And that's probably the reason we don't want to we do want Oprah for president, but but we don't necessarily because what if we get Dr. Phil as the Surgeon General? Ooh, that'd be bad. <laughs> well, it can't be any worse than the EPA guy that Trump had nominated this time. Mmm. Those people were amused as they walked by about my you know, saying Trump's gonna put everything in a truck and drive away. They they laughed. <laughs> that's probably what's gonna happen, actually. <laughs> It's not a prediction. That's a, that's what he would do because he's a he's a psychopathic narcissist, delusions of grandeur. Because he is the president, he can do whatever he wants. Or thinks he can. The irony being that, come twenty twenty one, if he figures out a way to to stump, stump the elections, that speaker of the house becomes president automatically. Not him. Not Pence. The speaker of the house. They don't want. They want that. <laughs> They just say, oh, that was the liberals' plan all along. Oh. No, it's not. It was some guy on the TV, that uh, one of those actor doctors that worked for Fox. They see it all ties back in. There. That is today. Uh, out on the trail. The phone's dead yesterday. Oh, that's today. So, yeah. That's today. <laughs> Tuesday. Sixth week. Okay, let me also add that some people on the behest of Fox News and Trump and their bug spray stuff, uh, uh, mosquito uh, stuff, ordered up the mosquito stuff, took it, and immediately died of heart attack. So it doesn't work. There you go, they died of heart attack. Let's say, no, no, they were gonna die of a heart attack anyway. No, no, it's, it's really bad. You should not use it. No oxychloroquine, oxychlorofluoroplin, don't take that. You'll die, great. Maybe that's what he wanted, though. Maybe it's that herd mentality Fox was talking about, which he then reiterated on the TV because he watches only Fox News. Ooh. Even Bush was smarter than that. Even Bush was like, oh, I know, pro I know Fox News is my propaganda network. I'm not going to go on there and, and actually take their advice. Ha, <laughs> come on. <laughs> Except for the weapons of mass destruction that didn't exist at all and they ever found any anywhere. It turns out the Syrians had them the whole time. The Iraqis never had them. Hmm. <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah. That curveball was lying to him. <laughs> That's the real corrosion of war with that. Wednesday.
Wednesday. Wednesday for the 22nd, I think. On the 6th. So basically, uh, basically all those uh, the the protests in the swing states about the about being locked indoors apparently were organized by right wing extremists within the uh, campaign party of Donald Trump. They apparently organized the protests in order to cause dissension, so that people would get mad and want to leave. Uh, yeah, uh, they got caught. The New York Times caught them as well as other outlets, because everything is instantaneous and everyone sheltered indoors. So, um, they got caught red-handed, kind of like they did in 2016, except they got elected after 2016. Um, so, uh, so yeah, it's, it's, they were just copying the Occupy Wall Street people, which is in reverse, really, if you think about it. They were, they were sheltered in, 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 in Occupy Wall Street in reverse. Because they were all hang hunkering down in that. But yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's ridiculous. I'm so still sheltered in. Still, this is a reef walk out here. Uh, but yeah, um, so yeah, that's it really. That's it on the politics side of this talking pointless uh, story. It is pointless. There you go. <laughs> that was, it's, yeah, well, they got caught. So. As I was walking along here, thinking of Star Trek and other things, I was thinking as well that their protest thing is ultimately self-defeating because if they manage to convince some of these swing states to open up and they all get COVID-19 because they opened up early, then who are they gonna blame but themselves for their dumb protest conspiracy thing? Like, yeah, how does that work? They can't blame the liberals because they did it themselves. Um, so, yeah, their, their plan is ridiculous based on faulty evidence from other random sources. Well, what's their plan exactly? The plan doesn't make sense. <laughs> it's like a bad plot of an episode of like a cheesy ripoff of a ripoff of 24. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe crime scene investigation, or maybe maybe House of Cards. They like ripped off a rip off of, of a rip off of House of Cards. Uh, yeah, That's, and not even the American one, but the earlier British one, because they thought they were watching the other one and they weren't. Yeah, that's their plan. Ridiculous protests. <laughs> Don't make any sense. Not here. Over there. <laughs> Ah, uh, Dr. Giggles is back. Ah, so yes, it is uh, the 24th, it's Friday, uh, nearing the end of week six. And uh, yes, uh, John is doing a job. Well, he's the only worker on the job. I mean, Mark's cards. Or, well, I just realized John. Uh, you probably know that anyway. Anyway, so, um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, everybody's still indoors. And apparently Trump is, uh, and well, Trump. Uh, can they use bleach and sanitizer? Can we inject that? He actually said that. Bleach. Sanitizer. He actually... Uh, like, like, people use bleach to do horrible things to themselves to get attention. Why would... What? Uh, that's a bad... No. No, that's... No. This, no, don't do that. No. Anyway, so uh, from crazy shit that uh, Trump says, um, that's about it for today. <laughs> I'm gonna go do some the finish up corrosion and war without end, the transformer thing, and uh, yeah, so that's that's about it. And I shaved last night; it was too much. Uh, anyway, so. Uh, so so this is just the uh, yeah close of the last day of six week. Uh, I went out, but I came back. And this is just that. That's, I have nothing more to say other than, uh, uh, yeah, most of the GOP conservatives are not conservative at all anymore. They're crazy. They're hard right, ridiculous, crazy. They conservative used to mean conservative, like conserving things. It hasn't meant that since the 90s. So now it means the opposite of conserving things. It means 
It means anybody that doesn't agree with you just to make them look stupid. And then say stupid stuff and then claim that you're they're not you're you're lying or you made it up or it was a joke. They don't understand humor. They yeah, whatever. So yeah, uh, the, but no, no. The, the thing about the, the mainlining like detergent and bleach and 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 other stuff is not. Don't do that. Uh, that's not a joke. That's messed up. Um, yeah. Anyway, so that's the end of six weeks. Okay. So yes. talking pointless. It is the week of uh, the eighth week of the lockdown. I decided that instead of doing reports of the outside. Because they're, the kind of, they're all kind of similar. I would skip all the way until Sunday and just do the, the week in review. Ah. So on the uh, subject of that, I'm sure this is not going to be very long. Um, the After Adamicon convention, <laughs> in form, there were other Adamicons out there, but this is the Adamicon convention. Not the dentist convention, not the other one. Apparently that name is really common. Um, no, it had nothing to do with that. It was this parody of going out to Comic-Con, which can't do this year. Uh, they are going to phone in some of the Star Trek conventions on the internet, if you want to see those. Uh, but they will be doing that, and Creek Cons will be doing that. So, uh, uh, yeah, so it's kind of like that. But I'm just not there, because nobody's there. They're social distancing. Uh, so, yeah, there was, today there was a recent, uh, would count as the beginning of week nine, technically, social distancing Mother's Day thing. But, uh, but yeah, earlier last week there was, uh, in the news, it reported, uh, yeah, the million people in the U.S. have the coronavirus, 72,000 have died. That's roughly the population of Milpitas, but Milpitas has not died. Uh, that's, uh, yeah, Milpitas is a little larger, 76,000. Roughly the same amount of people that were in uh, Macross, Robotech, 70,000 something died. Uh, um, yeah, so... Uh, the, the 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 Trump the Trump he likes uh, the new uh, some other like uh, news station uh, AON AON I think it's uh, sort of a conspiracy station he likes that one better than Fox which is fine by me because Fox is annoying so if he goes to this other fringe station no one's heard of instead of Fox better uh, better for the country that he doesn't do that. But he probably won't. He'll figure that out, that it's not making enough money, so he'll go back to Fox, which unfortunately makes a lot of money spewing nonsense. Um, anyway, uh, I have conspiracy theories, such as uh, COVID-19 was created by the Chinese as a bioweapon, which was in, uh, which is silly, which was in, um, in the Inquirer before Pete mentioned it, which is where he read it, because he has buddies that work for the Inquirer. Uh, uh, yeah, so, yeah, there's a bunch of ridiculous stuff. It was uh, meat. It was uh, caused by bats in a meat plant in Wuhan, China. Uh, it's not man-made. It came from bats that got sick, and then the bats apparently sneezed or whatever on the food and spread everywhere. Uh, it seems to mutate, uh, and uh, yeah. Montana has some of the least cases because there's no one living there. California has somewhere in the middle. Uh, New York and Pennsylvania have the most, and then Texas, and then California. Uh, yeah, so, <laughs> and a bunch of other states. The ones that the ones that tried to open early, like Michigan and some of those other ones, well, like, we kind of got out, so that didn't work too well. They did open early. They, uh, they, yeah, Florida, that didn't work too well. Yeah, so, and yes, uh, children can get it. Um, yeah, and, uh, yeah, so... Anyway, that's my talking pointless thing, I guess. It's real short. I really don't have much to say about it. I don't have it. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so, uh, yeah, I was watching some of the, the other video stuff. I was mainly looking over my uh, bizarre uh, uh, Starship Chimera stories and uh, Starship Location stories, the, the uh, Picard and the one in the Fontana one, for DC Fontana ship one. Um, the, uh, in memory of the, <laughs> and, uh, and, um, not from the COVID, she was something else, uh, she was old, one of the old Star Trek writers, um, so, uh, yeah, so the Silly Trek thing is a, uh, Starship Location thing is a, is a, combines the Fontana mission and the Picard story 
parody because the Picard parody was only about 100 pages. The Fontana thing was only about 100 pages too. So, well, 150 roughly each. So it came out to 300. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's the Cillian story that's in pre-production. I had to get a new, I had to get a new mouse pad thingy, drawing pad. Because the new computer doesn't work with the old one. We'll see how well this works later. Drawing pad. Um, I hope it does. Um, yeah, but they stopped making up with that thing. Uh, yeah. So anyway, so that's talking pointless. That's her update. Uh, Mark's cards and crew are fine, and uh, we tried to find. Jim Buffkin and could not. I don't know anything about Tim currently. The Tim in this prime. Uh, and uh, yeah. Hope we'll have to do some Transformers pretty soon. So I'm going to Transformers stuff. So I'm going to go on to. Yeah. That's pretty much it. The Talking Pointless. This has been Talking Pointless.